We use a lot of different types of foam in our, mod our modeled airplanes and basically they, they involve a trade-off between stiffness or strength and resilience or, or being able to survive a crash. And uh, traditionally we, we use foams like this one. This is cell foam 88 which is a type of extruded polystyrene and this is a foam board foam which is again ex uh, extruded polystyrene and you, if you feel them and you look at them they, they look quite a bit different but they're really the same type of foam because you know foam is a man-made material and it, it literally is plastic that has been heated up and there's a, there's a gas injected in there you know could be air could be something else and then when it cools down it, it, it keeps that, that shape, that form, and uh, you know, it's foam, okay? But you can, it can be made through a lot of different processes. It can be made uh, into a foam that's a lot of different densities. So don't think that a given type of foam has to be one specific density because here's, here's two examples, and I know they're not the same density. You know, they, they weigh, uh, their weight per cubic foot is, is different. And you know the cell, cell foam 88 is heavier, but it's quite a bit stiffer. Now the problem with XPS is that it, it doesn't survive a crash very well. You know it, it's uh, brittle, so when it hits the ground, uh, you know high impact force, it just breaks. And you know, but otherwise it's a nice material. You know, nice and smooth, in, inexpensive, easy to shape, easy to mold. So it's kind of like going for it, and you still see some other airplanes made out of this. What has become really popular is uh, EPP which is expanded polypropylene and this is a, a piece of a pool noodle that was made out of EPP and EPP is is almost at the other end from XPS which is you know it's, it's very doesn't have much strength you know very soft it bends no problem but it's very resilient so, so you can compress it and it bounces back pretty much to where it was so when you hit it you know high impact it's not gonna shatter you know it, it just kind of bounces which is which is great, you know, it's amazing for our model airplanes. Now, you know, EPP, the grade that we normally get is, is very light, uh, but don't, it's not an intrinsic property because you can also make EPP that's very dense, you know, relatively heavy, but that's just the way we normally get it. And it's a great material. Another material that you may not be familiar with is EPE, which is, which is expanded polyethylene. And this is a this is a different pool noodle that's made out of EPE, and, and the reason why I can tell is because EPE is just very soft to the touch, but it's also, uh, if you can imagine, it's actually 50% more resilient uh, than EPP. So it just has a, an amazing ability to, to survive a crash. You know, you can compress it, and it just bounces right back to where it was. This is another piece of EPE, and you know, it's it's actually very soft to the touch. It's not, it doesn't have quite the strength of EPP, so it actually is, is um, you know, it has, uh, it can be bent a little bit more easily. But that's also what gives it its really outstanding uh, ability to just bounce from a crash and, and not break. So, it, so that, you know, there's a lot of proprietary foams on the market and they're basically blends of, of two types of foam and usually it's EPP with, you know, EPP, uh, uh, um, EPS or XPS you know but basically it's polystyrene and what they're trying to do is that they're trading off some of the crash resistance of EPP with some of the stiffness of the polystyrene and you know of course you can do different ratios and different processes so they're all different but to tell you the truth they're all still very very similar to EPP Okay. Now, what if pure EPP has an advantage over every other phone that that I, I, at least I'm aware of, which is it's got a really good heat resistance, and you know normally we don't care, but but some of these foams start to lose some of their strength when the, when it gets really hot. But th this is, you know, EPP is rated up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 de degrees Celsius. Uh, most of the other foams are rated uh, up through maybe 160 Fahrenheit, so. I don't know, it's at 75 uh, Celsius. So, you know, they're not quite as good. Most of the time, I don't think we need to worry about that. But I, I can imagine some applications where, you know, you need to be able to stand the heat better. You know, I, I, of course, you know, if there's, there's an engine that, that is touching or something like that, then you definitely need to worry about heat. But anyway, 
Uh, again, you know, if most of the newer phones, and I'm talking about like Elaport or you know EPO, or RCEL or Z phone, they're all pretty close to EPP. And see, the, the, the other reason why they use blends is that EPP is not a nice phone to mold. You know, you can mold it, but then when you pull it out of the mold, it still it does a little bit of expanding. So then the parts don't fit quite as well with each other as, as you would like. So so that's also why they use blends. But when when uh, the big a big RC manufacturer is making a molded airplane, because then it, it can, they can pull it out of the mold and it's going to look nice. Uh, but but for you use you know EPP or EPE are great choices or or even some of the blends too if you can get a hold of them. And uh, till next time.